So buying a property abroad is a pleasurable experience. You're, you're out looking at beautiful homes and things like this. However, if you don't live in the Eurozone, then obviously one of the things that you need to consider is how you bring the money over from your country of origin here to Spain. So in the example that we're going to use today, we're going to be talking about, uh, as a typical example, a UK client bringing money from the United Kingdom in pounds sterling to pay for a property in Spain, which is going to be in euros and how you do it and how the best and most efficient way of doing it is. So welcome to this week's episode of Two Minute Tuesday, where we take the, the stress and the strain out of doing a foreign currency transaction and doing it the most efficient way to save you as much money as possible. So welcome to this week's episode of Two Minute Tuesday with Hondon Valley Homes. So the fun bit of buying a house is the jumping on an aeroplane, flying out to uh, to Spain, uh, coming and looking at all these beautiful houses that we have, whether it's houses or villas, um, the, the, the sun on your back, beautiful blue sky, swimming pools, uh, it, you know, that's the fun part, driving around and looking at beautiful places. However, once you've found your dream villa, some of the more practical aspects need to be taken into consideration. So we have things like you need to appoint a lawyer when you're purchasing a property. We need to have uh, reservation contracts. Uh, a handshake isn't enough in Spain. You need to have a reservation contract. You need to pay deposits. You need to open uh, bank accounts, get uh, NID, N uh, NIE uh, numbers and things like this. So there are more practical uh, aspects that you need to uh, cover when you're here. And one of them, of course, is if you're not from the Eurozone, and your money is in UK sterling, pounds sterling, then you need to bring that over uh, to Spain to pay for the property in euros. So let me explain how we do this for our, uh, the clients of Hondon Valley Homes and keep it as stress-free and as simple as possible for you. So in order to take the stress and the strain out of bringing all your money over to, the, well not all your money, but the money to buy the house over to, um, over to Spain, generally people don't use banks, they'll use a money transfer company, an FX company. And so really why do people use FX companies as opposed to banks? So the first uh, thing that I would like to say is that they will generally get you better rates than the banks. When you're buying a property, you don't look at the tourist rate, you'll get the commercial rate because you're exchanging much larger uh, sums of money, but you'll get a better rate than the bank. There will also generally be uh, no uh, bank charges involved, so you're not going to get any receipt uh, or transfer uh, charges from uh, the bank either in the UK or from uh, Spain. However, you need, to, you need to double check. And the final thing is, this is what they do for a living. They, they just move money. They're, they're not trying to sell you insurance, not trying to sell you other products. They are just money transfer companies. So they, if you have a good company, they do exactly what it says on the, uh, on the tin. So when I talk about um, maybe getting better rates than the banks, what, what do I mean by that? So um, on one of the uh, currency FX uh, companies' websites, they do a comparison between the rate that they get uh, and then the, the varying rates for, for other companies. Now, on a typical transfer of, say, €50,000, the difference between the top rate and the bottom rate is nearly €1,000. So if you think a typical transfer here is going to be somewhere in the region of between 250 and €300,000, then realistically the difference between the top rate and the bottom rate could be as much as five or six thousand euros. Now if that doesn't wake you up and make you realise that you know, there are huge savings to be made by using the right companies, then really five or six thousand euros saving on a property is a huge, huge amount. And of course, if you are worried about transferring this huge sum of money to a company that you've never heard of, then you need to do your due diligence as well. And you can check with the Financial Conduct Authority, if you're in the UK, uh, the FCA, and check that the company is, uh, is authorised to trade uh, by them. Um, but obviously, if it's a, a company that, that, say, we're recommending or a lawyer is recommending, it's because we've got prior experience with that company and we know they work. So during the actual sales process, when we're, when we're dealing with our clients, we, we offer a sort of... A, we suggest a package to people so we can we can help people with uh, lawyers and bank accounts and insurance companies and of course foreign exchange companies so 
what happens when we recommend one of these companies. So with the, with the potential buyer's permission, we will then contact the, the foreign exchange company and they will then in turn contact the, the client back and they will open uh, an account for them. Now, what they need, because they need to do their due diligence because of things like money laundering, they'll need copies of your passport and they'll need your contact details, address in the UK. If you have an NIE number, they'll need that and your bank account details from the, uh, from the UK so that you can open an account with them to do the money transfer. The money transfer people, you will speak to a human being as well, rather than just doing it all on an app. Although, although with lots of them, you can actually do it on an app. But it's always still nice to speak to a human being who's involved in money transfer because you can speak to them about how much money you're transferring, what the money is for, and they can give you advice on when the best rates are available and if something is happening in the money markets, whether it's advisable to transfer money sooner or to wait until something has happened and then the rate may get better for you. So it's always good just to speak to somebody rather than if you're not familiar with the money market, trying to do it yourself and monitoring rates. If you speak to somebody like a broker who does it for a living, then they can give you the, uh, the best information possible. Then all you do is you will have the details from the FX company. They will give you their account and you'll also have a reference code so that they can identify that any payment that you send to them uh, is uh, registered in your uh, name. As I said before, most of the companies have apps. So you'll be able to uh, check very quickly on the app that the money has gone from your UK account into the money uh, FX company and that you can see it uh, sat there. And then when you receive the instruction from your lawyer that the, uh, the money needs to be sent to Spain to purchase the house, which is normally a week or so beforehand, uh, you can either do that by speaking to the broker directly, or if you're happy to do it on the app, you can do it on the app. Again, the lawyer in Spain will uh, give you their account number and you put a reference on so that the lawyer can see that the payment has come from, uh, from yourself. You can then see the money leaving your account on the app and the lawyer here in Spain, if you're transferring it to their client's account, will then send you an email to say that the funds have been received uh, safely here in Spain. There are a few other things that you can do as well with the money transfer companies. If you're doing all of this in advance, it may well be that the uh, transfer company will allow you to fix the rate and things like that, or you can buy in advance and things. Um, there are lots of complicated things that you can do. In, the, uh, in this video, we're just going to cover the absolute basics. But when you're speaking to your broker or the, the FX company, they will explain other, other things that they can do, which will help you along the route. So there you go, that's transferring money from the UK, as an example, over to Spain in order to buy your property. However, there are of course people who are selling property here in Spain and maybe taking money back to the UK. And the process is exactly the same. So you, you speak to the broker, you open the accounts, and then you do the transfer. And again, we, we help you with that as you're doing it. One of the other things that they can do as well is that if, maybe if you're living here or if you have a holiday home here and you need to do a regular transfer, so every month transfer some money to cover the running costs or transferring your pensions over or investments, things like that, you'll often get a much better rate whether you're doing that through the, uh, the transfer companies. So you can always set up direct debits with them and things like that. So there are lots of options for bringing your money over here to Spain or indeed for sending it back. And there you go, short and sweet episode this week. Hopefully it's one that will take a little bit of stress off people who uh, are buying a property here or maybe repatriating money back to, uh, to the UK. Of course, this works whether you're, whether you're in the UK doing pounds sterling or whether it's US dollars or zlotties or whatever uh, currency it happens to be. Uh, so that's it this week's uh, episode. Um, my details will be on the screen at the moment. So if you've got any questions or queries, please feel free to, uh, to let me know. Um, next episode will be up in a couple of weeks' time. And until then, look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Adios.